I just want to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is the love of God. In Ephesians, there's a prayer, and Paul said, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him. And then in the second prayer, he said, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened, listen, with power through his spirit. Where? In the inner man. Why? So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Christ may dwell in your heart through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in what? Love. May be able to comprehend what is the love, what is the breadth, the height, the length, and the depth, and to know what is the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. That I'm, you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do far more exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus. To all generations forever and ever. Amen. So the heart of that prayer is the love of God. Paul is praying that Christ would live in our heart through faith. First of all, he said, I bow my knees before the Father, which is a sign of humility. Okay? And then he said that Christ may live in our heart through faith. And that we being rooted and grounded in love. Because if you're rooted and grounded in love, nothing can shake you. Nothing can move you. Nothing can stop you. Period. The love of God. The Bible says God is love. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. This is not a mental knowledge revelation. This is something that's made real in your heart and in your spirit. And, and worship really helps you get intimate with the Holy Ghost where you start to become the love of God, where the love of God begins to shed abroad. It says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Paul said if you have not love, you become as a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Said you can pray in tongues all day. If you have all the knowledge, all of this, all of that, but if you have not love, you are nothing. It profits you nothing. Love is what? Patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not arrogant. And you just go through uh, Corinthians 13 and you see what love is. The biblical definition of what love is. First Corinthians 13 tells you what love is. And then in Romans 12, you see some more about love. But, uh... It says, fulfill the law of Christ and love one another, bear one another's burdens. And it's something that you have to experience. And I'm just, I'm just beginning to experience it. I'm not speaking from a place of, of, of having arrived or having attained. But, you know, when trials and tribulations come my way, I can literally just laugh. You know what I'm saying? And, and Paul said, what is man that you are, or not Paul, David said, what is man that you are mindful of? And he said, what can man do to me? Man can do nothing to you. Come on, Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit, all these scriptures, just, just, as I'm speaking, are just coming to me. He said, nothing shall separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. No angel, no demon, nothing and nobody can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your body, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Period. Forget everything else until you get them too. Love God and love your neighbor. So we got the first most important commandment and the second commandment, which is to love. And then we see in 1 Corinthians 13 what love is, what love looks like. We see it personified in Jesus Christ. He laid down his life. He said the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He said the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So from the word you see what true, the true definition of love is. It's not an emotion. It's not a mental thing. It's not something you talk about. It's something that you do. It's, it's something that you live in. You live in the love of God. If somebody has it, it's evident. You don't have to convince somebody. It's just the character of Christ is manifested in you and through you. And to be able to walk on it, it says, Greater love has none other than a man lay down his life for his friends. So basically, love is you laying down your life. And then also in the word it says, if anyone calls one of these who believe in me to stumble, it'd be better for him to tie a brick around his neck and to be thrown into the sea. Jesus said it basically would be better for you to commit suicide than to cause somebody else to stumble in their walk. So that, that, that just hit me hard in my spirit. Even as I spoke and I checked myself right now, you know, that's why I'm very careful not to give in to any kind of offense, not to give in to any kind of any flesh or any kind of any of that. 
you know, especially with your, with your love walk and faith works through love and by love. So it's so important to walk in love. And Jesus said, you judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. You know, and what happened with Christ is he was persecuted by the religious, the Pharisees and the Sadducees because their heart was not right. They knew the word inside and out. They knew the word. They were the most religious men of that day. Very religious. They were the, ha, ah, I don't know if I want to go in on this. Matthew 23, you see, you know, read that chapter and Jesus basically rebukes the Pharisees and the religious people of that time. And that same spirit still operates today. And uh, they were they were church people. The Pharisees were church people. That's what they were. You know, Jesus didn't have problems with the prostitutes and the tax collectors. He ran into his problems with those that were in authority and they questioned his authority. They said, who gave you this authority? Do you see that? They said, who gave you this authority? And he said, I'll ask you a question too. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or was it from men? He said, you answer me that question, I'll answer you your question. And they wouldn't answer him. He said, neither will I answer you your question. Why? Because they were playing games. They weren't real. You know, don't get caught up in, in the flesh. Don't get caught up in carnality. Don't get caught up in, in gossip and slander and hate and animosity. Just love. The best thing you can do is love because God will sort everything out. If you keep your heart right and you just love Jesus and you follow the Holy Ghost and you go wherever he goes and you do whatever he tells you to do, you know, there's nothing and nobody that can stop you. But, you know, I just pray that I'll grow in my love walk, you know, and hallelujah. And love is not being a doormat. That's not what love is. Love flipped the tables. God is love. Jesus was the son of God. God manifested in the flesh. He flipped the tables. Jesus said, you brood of vipers, how will you escape the damnation of hell? I'm not no ignorant person, and I'm nothing. It's Christ in me, but it's the word. This is not some teachings that I heard from people. This is the word of God that you read it, you meditate it, you pray in the Holy Ghost, and it gives you understanding. Seeing who Christ is in the word, getting a firsthand revelation of who he is, what he did, who we are in him. That's, that's the key, is having a personal, intimate relationship with God. It is a fellowship. Jesus fellowship with the Father. He slid off to the mountain. He went on the mountain. He was in constant fellowship with the Father. He said, not my will, but your will be done. He said he did nothing but what he heard the Father say is what he was speaking. He did nothing but what he saw the Father do. And he said, works that I do and greater works shall you do because I go to the Father. He said, it's good for you that I go away because if I do not go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I go, I'll send him to you. He said, there's things I want to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But however, when he, the Spirit of truth comes, he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. The word says that God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Money doesn't make you somebody. Success doesn't make you somebody. Social status doesn't make you somebody. Numbers don't make you somebody. They don't make you somebody. Title, position, nothing. It's not, even the word says this, we don't commend ourselves, but it's God who commends us. On that day, we'll stand before him and he will reward us according to what we did, not based on what any man thinks. You'll stand before Jesus and he will, he will reward you for what you did. So until that day, we only know in a glimpse. And that day is going to be a, a, a mighty powerful day because we're going to see a lot of things. I think a lot of people who you would think are going to have huge rewards are not. And a lot of people who you don't think are going to have much of any reward are going to have treasure in heaven. Because that's just the wisdom of God. So I really hope that blesses you. Walk in love, walk in humility. And when I say that, I mean the people you live with, your roommates, your family, your wife, your husband, your kids, your cousins, whoever. Walk in love. Stop tripping on people. Stop getting bent out of shape over stupid stuff. Stop being a stumbling block for other people. It says it's better for you. Before you cause your brother or your sister to stumble, tie a brick around your neck and go drown yourself in the sea. That's what Jesus said. That's not what I said. That's how real it is and how he's saying do not cause people to stumble and don't speak against anybody. Just silence your tongue. James chapter 3. Bite your mouth. Bite your lip. Don't, don't, don't let negative words come out of your mouth. Don't be gossiping, slandering. Just bring it to the Father. If something happens, go into prayer. Talk to God about it. That's it. And let it be. If people want to hold unforgiveness or offense or act sideways towards you, let it be. Don't, don't play the game. Don't feed into it. Just let it be. There's nothing you can do. They have to get their heart right with God. Okay? Satan is the accuser of the brethren. That's what he does. That's all he does day and night is he accuses, accuses, accuses. Jesus didn't go around accusing anybody. He said the Son of God came into the world not that it might be destroyed, but that through him it might be saved. He did not come to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. 
So I really hope that edifies you. Holy Spirit, is that it? Father, we just worship you. We magnify you. I glorify your name, Jesus. God, I pray for your grace, Lord. Any offenses right now for the watcher, Lord, anybody that has anything going on, Lord, anybody struggling with inequity or sin or unforgiveness or, or hate or pride or any of those things, Lord, that you're just by your fire, that you'll burn it out, Jesus. No division in the body, no strife. This isn't the game. This is eternal. This is souls. This is, this is heaven and hell. This is real. Father, that all game playing would be purged from the body, Father. They would be quick to, to be quiet and, and, and slow to speak and, and quick to listen, Lord. They will be humble, Father. They will be doers of the word. They will help, help people in need, Jesus. Not cast people away, not beat people up, not throw people to the side, Lord. But you said if your brother sins against you, forgive him. Peter said how many times? He basically said you always continue to keep forgiving. You never stop forgiving. When you look at what he forgave you for, you know why it's so easy for me to forgive? Because I know what God has forgiven me for. That's why I don't trip over stuff. You know, and it's funny because people might think you carry something. I don't. I, I refuse to carry anything. I'll take it to prayer. I'll take it to the Father, and I'll get it off of me immediately. I refuse to have aught, animosity, hatred, strife, any of that. I refuse to have any of that. By the grace of God, I, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you keep our hearts clean and our minds clean and our lives clean in Jesus' mighty name. Love you guys. Share the gospel. Love all people.